Hi guys and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seidlitz and I'm the owner of redpants.lol and today I'm going to show you how to change the tail lights on an Aston Martin V8 Vantage. The process is pretty much the same for the DB9. It's just a few bolts and your um, uh, you're pretty much set. There are only a few tools that you need. I have all those listed out on my website, redpants.lol, in the DIY section. So if you are looking to do this job, it's a pretty common thing to do, especially for anybody that wants to change their taillights from red to clear or vice versa. Um, I do sell those those taillights and any Aston Martin OEM parts. So if you need anything, please let me know. Those are in the online store of my website, or you could email me directly, rich at redpants.lol. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do this job on my gray car. You may see the uh, red car pop up in this video with the clear tail lights, and I know you will at one point because I had uh, originally done this job on camera for the putting the clear lights on my red car. Unfortunately, I messed up filming half of that, so I have to redo it. But the neat thing is, I had to do the tail lights on my gray car anyway because if you guys remember, I wrecked this car at Summit Point during a track day. Uh, I think it was about a month and a half, two months ago now and I needed to change out one of the taillights. Well, I have smoke taillights on this, so I can't just swap it out for another one. So I decided that I'm gonna take the original red taillights from the red car and put them on this car, since the red car now has clear taillights. <sighs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing to do is remove the trim panel that is along here. You can do this after you've removed the taillight, but I find it easier to do first because the taillight being on the car is gonna allow you to use both hands to remove it instead of having to hold the taillight with one hand while working with the other. There are two strips of double-sided tape that run along here and then another piece of double-sided tape right here. There's also a clip here and a clip here and I will show you those all momentarily. An easy way to get this started is to use a trim tool to get in there and start releasing this. You wanna be careful because it is thin plastic so it does bend a bit, but you don't want to crack the paint or break the plastic. And I did the other side and it came off really easily. Let's see how easily this comes off. And there's that first clip. There we go. This is not the most glamorous thing, but it does get the job done. Now, obviously I'm going a bit quick on this. You might want to be more careful. This is a busted taillight, so I don't really care if it does get more damage in the process. All I care about is this trim piece. All right, so at this point I've hit that other, um, that other clip, so I need to work around that. This is actually might be easier than I'm making it look. I'm trying to reach around the camera without being in the way. So it's actually a weird spot for me to be in, but it's pretty much loose. There we go. And we are away. So there's those strips right there. There's a big chunk on the end. There's all this stuff. Um, if the clip stays inside the housing, you do need to pull that off. Here it is on this side. You can see that it kind of came off. Here, doo -doo. So you want to make sure that stays all the way on, like that. And uh, next we need to clean off the trim piece, so all this has to come off. It's easy to just roll your thumb along it. Should work to get a lot of that off. It takes some time, it's a bit tedious, but that is what you need to do to clean this up so that the next set of double-sided tape actually adheres to it. All right, in the trunk, we've got three bolts on each of the taillights, and the three on the left-hand side, that's the driver's side in the U.S., has got these, um, has, they're all out in the open, and they each have a cap on them. They just twist off with your hand like so. You can see one, two, and three. The passenger side, or the right-hand side, is different. You can only see two of them, one here, one here. The third one is behind this cubby. So there's a leather tab, you can pull that, and it exposes it, and you can see that third one right there in, I think that's the center of the film. Um, 
there are a few other things to know about in this cubby. There's the fuse box right here. This is where infamous Fuse 22 is. You've got a battery disconnect switch on some cars. Some cars don't have this right here. You also have a power outlet, so that's there. Um, it's a popular charging point. So um, once you've removed the three caps, next you can pull the carpet lining back. This is going to expose each of these so you can now see that there is a large washer on these. There's also going to be a foam gasket behind it. Okay, now that we have the tail light loose, we can remove it from the car. The way to do this is to take it from the outside of the car, the outside edge closest to the rear wheel, and to bring it out slightly and then rotate it. And that's going to expose the inside where we've got the wiring connector. There is a red tab right here, and this is where our flathead screwdriver comes in handy. This red tab is all that's keeping the connector in place. When we get in there and then pry it out, it's going to allow us to uh, remove the connector. I like to get it just loose and then use my hands to go the rest of the way. It gives you more control to keep it from popping or moving anything around because these bolts can be very dangerous to metal. You can see how close you're getting to those. You want to be really careful. But once that is that red tab is pulled all the way out, the connector is loose. There's nothing else to hold on to. And then we can remove the tail light the rest of the way. So in order to get to the center tail light, we have to remove a few things. First are the four of the uh, fir tree clips, there are two right here and two right here. You're gonna use your trim tool to remove those, which is not too bad. When it's sitting here, you just get underneath it like this and pop it out. It may take some work because they suck. Um, the next thing is the T30 bolt that is right here. This holds the metal bracket and leather strap in place. Once you have removed that, looks like this. Once you've removed that, you can pull this down and we can now see the center brake light in the back. This is that wire clip that I was talking about is in, actually, hey, I've got zoom now. Do, do, there we go. Um, this is the wire clip that holds the wiring connector in place. I've already popped this loose to make it easier, but it's you can do this with a flathead screwdriver, pop this loose. It's probably better to do it with a set of needle nose pliers because then you can get the, um, you can hold on to the clip once it's loose, but with that that clip off, that wire clip off, this will just slide right off, and we can set that aside. You then have two seven millimeter nuts. One is right here, and one is on the other end of the of the uh, light in the other side. So I've already loosened these, of course, and we can start releasing these. You need to be careful because there is both a nut and a washer. You don't want to lose those because if you do, it's going to go behind. The, uh, this insulating pad, this carpeting, and you're gonna have to dig in there to get it. So be careful when you pull out the nuts and washer. Oh my goodness, trying to put this on camera's hard. So once you have the connector and the two nuts loose off the back of the center tail light, this goes inward to be released. And there's a little bit of a seal, so it may take a little effort to push it through, but you wanna be careful. You just push it in and it comes out and then you can retrieve it from the underside of the trunk and that is that so having removed the uh, red light you notice that it that seal was this foam strip that's on here the new one does come with it so you don't have to worry about having a uh, having to retrieve that off the old one but installation is in reverse we just pop it right back up in there um, you just want to be careful because you've got this nice new light you don't want to mess up the housing too much so there we have it that's in place you want to hold it with your hand while you're getting it fastened back up. You have that seven millimeter nut and the flat washer that both need to go on there. Don't forget those and try to be really careful with this so you don't drop the uh, either piece of it. Um, like I said, that's gonna be fairly difficult to retrieve. And getting it started is always the hardest part. There we go. Now that that's on there, you can see we have this nice clear tail light in the center. So I wasn't kidding when I said in the beginning of, the, of this video that it took a few attempts to make the whole thing. It's obviously a hodgepodge and I'm probably gonna insert this clip into the middle of the video. And obviously I've had yet another wardrobe change which means it is round three of trying to make this. Anyway, um, this is the backside of a taillight. And as you can see, there are three bolts on it. These are those three that you are working with. They look completely different than what you see on the inside of the car though, from the trunk. And that's because each of them has this adjuster sleeve. It's this black one, it's thick, it's basically a bolt that goes on top of another bolt. And on here you can see this is that foam washer. It's uh, very, very 
thin. It actually looks like a rubber gasket at this point because it's so compressed. It's been there for so long. When you install this, uh, your new tail lights, you're going to be switching over these um, adjuster sleeves. They just twist right off and you put them on to the new one on the clear tail lights. One of these bolts will not be here. I want to say it's the outside one, but I could be wrong on that. Um, you'll have a new bolt that goes in there with an adjuster sleeve uh, that has a built-in adjuster sleeve with uh, the two from two of the ones from the original tail light switching over. When you put these in, the easiest way that I find to do it is if you tighten these up, you can push the tail light into the car. Let's, see, let's do it this way, and then put it where you want it, and then from the inside of the trunk, spin the adjuster so that the backing of it goes towards the trunk, the uh, the outside of the trunk. It's basically what you're doing is you're putting it in place, and then you're adjusting these accordingly. Otherwise, what you're going to end up doing is putting in the lamp, trying to figure out what's wrong, pulling it out, spinning these. It's a big pain in the butt. The easiest way to do it is put it where you want it and then adjust these until the back of the adjuster sleeve is against the trunk and then you know, and it won't wiggle once you have all three of them even. That's another thing is you wanna make sure they're all even so that the tail light isn't wiggling. If one, if it is able to wiggle when you have it, all the adjustments done, it's because it, the adjustments are out of sync. One of them isn't far enough out or in or however the case may be. So to install this is pretty easy. The first thing you need to do is to uh, connect the clip. You have a decent amount of space, you put that in, and in order to secure it, you have to close that red tab. You push the red tab in, and that's it. Then you put this in place, and then you have to deal with the adjustments, and then you cap it off. Once it's inside and you have everything where you want it, you'll have new rubber gaskets. I, again, I messed up filming on this twice, so I'm out of these because I already used them on both my cars. But you put this on um, against the trunk lining, the, the large washer goes over that, then the lock washer, and then the nut. So that rubber gasket will keep moisture from getting in through the trunk and you'll be all set. So the last thing to do for the taillight itself once it's in place is to put the trim piece back on. On a new taillight, you're gonna have double-sided tape. You'll have two strips going along like so, and another piece down here. This is a used tail light, so obviously I'm gonna be re, uh, doing my own thing with some new uh, double-sided tape. I didn't get all of it clear, cleared off. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter because I'm using a big piece that's going right down the middle instead of two thin ones. So on this, not that big of a deal, but this isn't the best way, uh, but it is a solid way of doing it. So anyway, um, if you do have uh, you know the new tail lights, you're not gonna have that issue at all. It's all gonna be ready for you. Double-sided tape, ready to go, just pop on the new piece. So the easiest way that I found to do this is you have two tabs. You have one here, right there, and then you have one down here. The one on this end is somewhat angled, so you can put it in like this, and then rotate it into place. Try to get my arm out of the way, like so. Make sure that it is lined up, and then press it in so that the double-sided tape seals. is it that's all it takes so as you can see it's nice and firm and we are good to go okay so that's all it takes this is a finished project the last thing that you want to do is make sure that all of your tail lights work that means having somebody behind it so that when you press the brake the left signal the right signal and the hazards everything does show up like it's supposed to on the tail lights um, I do sell this as a complete kit. It includes everything you need. It includes all three tail lights, unless it's a DB9. It doesn't include the third one because you don't need one. But for the V8 Vantage, it does include all three: the tail lights and the center high mounted signal lamp. I think is the full name for it. The uh, kit also includes the adjuster nuts. It's called an adjuster sleeve. It's for the newer tail lights. Only have two bolts that are, that are molded in. The third one is separate, so that is included as well, as well as the reseal kit, which includes all those foam gaskets to make sure that moisture doesn't get into the car through those holes. So if you have any questions, please reach out rich at redpants.lol or through the contact page of my website, redpants.lol. Thanks for joining me.